work, if you're going to make a project, don't do five at once, don't spread your energy, you know, just absolutely pour all your resources and energy and thoughts and emotions and whatever into one place and look what it does. My parents are godsends, you know, like God I literally handpicked my parents for me because, you know, look, my dad is a craftsman, you know, he used to make stuff with his hands, you know, he made couches, you know, he's really, really hands on. Right now, he's, he's, he's into farming, you know, he's had many phases in his life, but dad is a very hands on person, you know, and he's, been a, he's taken photos, so he, that's the side to dad. And my mum, who uh, uh, is more sort of like a bookworm and, you know, reads, reads a lot, writes a lot. Mum writes so much, you know, she just scribbles, scribbles, has pages and pages. So there's no coincidence that I'm a writer directing now, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it kind of makes sense, yeah. even though there was no direct sort of link or reason as to why that would happen, you know? See, the backstory is I go to the London Film School, so you get people from the whole world coming into Covent Garden to learn how to make films. And I remember being in like, the first or second term out of six and watching the grad films in term six and people shooting in Bolivia, you know, Amazon rainforest and getting all these beautiful shots. And I was like, well, I'm not going back to the block to get, you know, to do that, it's boring. You know, you can watch Top Boy for that if you want, you know? <laughs> so I just need like a different aesthetic, you know, I, I need something else. And by this point, I hadn't been to Ghana in 18 years. So in August 2015, I actually just booked my own ticket and went on my, on my own, man, do you know what I mean? And just sort of like went and reconnected with the land, you know, and said, look, there's no option here, I'm shooting in Ghana, you know? And fast forward to Feb um, 2016, um, I said to myself, I'm definitely shooting that film, if you know what I mean. And you know what, to be honest, it was all faith-based because there wasn't sort of money or my parents can't, don't come from money, you know, I don't have a safety net, you know, I can't ask somebody, hey, give me 25 grand yeah. to make a short. So actually I went by faith. I just said, look, hook, and that's the way I am, like full stop, even till today, I'm still sort of like throwing the anchor, for, you know, as far as I can and pulling myself towards it, hook or crook. And I think that's what House Girl was. So yeah, um, yeah like we, I said, I'm shooting on Feb the 11th. I didn't budge from that, you know, um, and I did a Kickstarter and raised 10 grand, which is just not easy because I was, I was working full time as well at that time at Netapool Tay doing customer service while still going to film school as well. So that wasn't easy. But honestly, it's just a case of faith, but also like using like, like I've, 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 had to, I've had to survive before, ex, you know, any kind of excellence, do you get what I mean? Like, and that comes with a certain grit, if you know what I mean. And that's what I relied on a lot. You know, it's just about, hey, I want you to work. I know you're the, the best that I've got sort of access to. So look, just do it and I'll invoice me. I'll sort out the rest, do you get what I mean? It's sort of like, I'm just gonna, but for me, it's just about making that film. And honestly, it is a faith story I'm offering because I never had the final budget of that was about 23 to 24K. And I never had that in my account at once, if you know what I mean. Mm. It's literally just faith and then God just brings it as and when you, and that's, that's what faith is. It's sort of like living in the here and the now, yeah. if you know what I mean. And, and knowing that no matter what, like this thing is going to work. And I'm very fond of the film because my mum's passed away now, unfortunately, in 2018. And that's, that's a story that was actually inspired by my mother. You know, she used to tell me the story over and over and over again when she had this aunt mm -hmm. back in Ghana who just never used to treat the house girls properly. And, you know, I kind of merged my time going to Ghana in 015 with my mum's story put together. So it has that sentiment within me. And now we'll turn it into a six part drama, you know, actually horror thriller, I think is, is the right genre. I remember when I was in film school, I uh, guessed Tim Bevan's email address at Working Title. So this is the founder of, of Working Title. And I sent the email at 3 a.m. and responded actually like, like 10 a.m. It's like, hey, yeah, fix an appointment with my assistant. Let's have a chat. I was like, wow. So I went in and he gave me advice. And he told me to um, write a film that, like he said, only write a, a story only you can write, like something that, you know, you've witnessed or your loved ones witnessed. And that's what House Girl was actually. So I met Tim Bevan before I made House Girl. And then House Girl and Haircut was two sort of offerings of the advice he gave me, if you know what I mean. So it's like, tell a story only you can tell, which is whether there's someone really close to you who went through it or you went through it yourself. And then one day, I think the end of that fasting week, I was walking home and I was kind of praying to God, it's like, listen, I hate this job, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm supposed to stay here, just like, don't let me hate it so much or, you know, just take me out. Like, what is this? And then um, he goes to me in my head, this is 2017. The start of 2017, I met Ashley Waters because he, he watched House Girl at an event. I was like, wow, like what a black guy directed this kind of thing. And mm -hmm. yeah, so he threw his number at me. And he was like, yeah, write a short film and I'll act in it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So anyway, that's the first thing that God reminded me on my walk home when I was saying this prayer. It's like, look, but Ashley Waters said, write a short film. Have you done it? I was like, oh, fair enough, mate. 
Then he goes, and, and, and uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? And then I, was, and then I was like, well, what should I write about? He goes, well, Tim Bevan said, write a story that only you can tell and that you think about again and again and again, like that you can't forget. Mm. And I remember there was one time I went to the barber, like Marcus's again, it was my friend. And um, we walked into the middle of a, of a whole situation where, you know, we sat down waiting to get our hair cut. And then a guy came in sweating with a tag on his ankle, like, where's my bag, where's my bag, where's my bag, kind of thing. And I was thinking, what's this guy talking about? And my barber took up the scissors, like, you know, because obviously, he, you know, he could have got heated very easily. But then obviously, when my barber picked up the scissors, everyone in the shop just stuck it on this guy. I was like, listen, you're not touching this guy. So he left. And then my friend that I came to the barber shop with actually, um, so, sorry, back. So before we came to the shop, what actually happened was this guy came to the shop because uh, the police were chasing him and he was selling weed while he was on tag, like, like an idiot, you know. And, you know, he sort of stashed the, 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 the backpack behind the fridge in the, in the, in the barber shop and pretended to be the tailor because my barber's got a tailor in, in the barber's with the sewing machine. So he just pretended to be the, the, the tailor. And then the police came in and just did nobody snitched or anything and they didn't know who was who, so then just came in and left. So obviously when they came in and left, he just ran away and left his bag. So then my barber told someone, get rid of the bag kind of thing because there's, you know, I don't want this, why is this loads of weed in my, in my, in my shop? Because obviously you opened it. Yeah. And then so he told someone to take it away. But then my friend that came to the shop with knew that guy. So my barber was like, call him, call him, tell him to bring the bag. Anyway, it wasn't a you know, big, but I couldn't stop thinking about that because mm. it was just... It's a funny little story. Yeah. So that day, actually, that I said this prayer, I went home and I wrote the first draft of Haircut that day and it changed my life, man. I remember putting my all into that film. It's sort of like, I, again, I didn't have money around that time because I took risks. That's the thing about me. Like, I've taken risks. You know, I've taken bigger risks in life, which I'm not going to go into, but, you know, this is, you know, as, as a result, I'm not going to not take this risk. Um, but, yeah, man, it changed my life. I love the film. Do you know what I mean? I put everything into it. I was watching, because uh, I didn't have money, I couldn't really go anywhere. So I was just watching loads, reading loads, and pouring it all into my film. And that, if I can give any advice off the back of that, it's like, look, if you're going to make a project, don't do five at once. Don't spread your energy. You know, just absolutely pour all your resources and energy and thoughts and emotions and whatever into one place, and look what it does. You know what I'm saying to you? It's quite a spiritual transition so yeah um so I'm, I'm actually so it's currently um haircut is is um i'm developing the feature film with film four currently so you know the aim is actually to shoot that as soon as as soon as possible really but you know i'm currently working on this tv show um until december so then regroup where god's grace you know uh, uh january february you can get to it you know because i've got more films to make and more tv shows i just don't want to wait around i think actually Norton cross's season one and two for me was you know, my post film school education, if you know what I mean, and how to sort of throw yourself in there and, you know, uh, how to work to an industry standard. Because look, all of these things, industry standard and all of that is the bare minimum, guys, to be honest with you. You know, like what you need to do is learn that so you can be bolder and go forth and look for new possibilities. Like when I go on set to direct, I'm not going there to shoot the script. You know, that's the bare minimum, like take one script done, now let's figure out what else is happening here and, you know, what other shots we can get and, you know, things like that. Because, you know, production and shooting while you're on set is all about experimenting. It should never be, like, prescriptive where, you know, I have to, we have to do this yeah. or have to do that. You know, once you get into that space of having to, you're going to go into a very artificial end product. You know, you kind of have to, you know, let it loose. The whole point of, so it's three stages of this, this process. Writing the script is drumming up all the material you're going to go and use to, um, um, experiment and um, sh production actually shooting the thing is the experiment and then post-production editing is the conclusion of the experiment <laughs> so you know why you did all of this stuff do you get what I mean and I think if you think of it like that rather than a prescriptive way you're going to find that the story tells itself and that's when you sort of get the organic sort of storytelling that everyone connects to as opposed to you forcing what you think on everybody else because that's not what filmmaking not, that's not what cinema is in my opinion on the, on the shadow scheme on top was brilliant because again, you're going to laugh at me, but I guess the exec's email address is, you know, while I was making the, f the haircut, so I had a rough cut, I hadn't got an agent or anything, and I guessed their email address, and I like, look, I need to direct an episode of this, like I grew up on it, here's a rough mm -hmm. cut, and I had Malcolm Camilletti, who was in the Channel 4 version as my lead in my haircut, so I was like, yeah, maybe that'll be a bait to, you know, make them want to 
talk to me. Mm. And they actually did. Ali Flynn, great guy, man. Alistair Flynn, you know, he, he actually called me. I was a nobody, you know what I mean? He called my phone. He's like, look, I'm going to LA when I come back, you know, you, there might be an opportunity. You know, I, I really respect those producers on Top Boy. You know, they gave me the episodes to, to shoot and it was light work. You know, I speak the same language as the cast. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. getting on like a house on fire, you know, like usually I give action verbs to actors when I direct them, sort of like condescend and stuff. But I can go to someone and say, yo, I need you to grill him. You know what I mean? And he, then he understands what I'm saying, you know, sort of like, it's like the colloquial version of action verbs, if you want to call it that. It was a lot of fun, you know. I never had to second guess what's happening, if you know what I mean, in terms of setting the scene and whatever. So it was good. It was good. It was a very enjoyable project. I've seen a lot of stuff I don't like, which people like to start, you know, use words like standard industry practice, which, you know, in my opinion, sometimes is manipulation. Do you know what I mean? And I, saw, I said to myself, it's got to change, you know, and I'd rather, you know, spend part of my brain on changing that than you know, going through all this trauma and on the surface it looks like I'm winning. You know, I'm just not interested in that at all. You know, I just don't want it because it's fake. Um, so started DBK Studios and DBK Studios is God's company, to be quite honest with you. It stands for Done by the King, right? And in essence, for me, it was the reason why that company, because look, all companies should be a solution to a problem. It should, you know, be chipping into a wider, you know, wider issue as opposed to vanity. Right, so for me, DBK Studios is telling untold stories. One of the main things I don't like about you know um, some parts of the industry is that you know when they when you're about to get commissioned for somebody, it's based on who you know, what you've done, okay. which is kind of pointless. Do you get what I mean? It's you know it's just a, it's just a gate that you know keeps you know people out that aren't for, like myself, you know, and unless. I'm blessed enough, you know, to jump over the gate, but I'm that type of guy, you know, if I break in the house, I'm breaking the back door open, you know, and everyone's coming, you know what I mean? Everyone's, everyone's coming through. Um, but yeah, you know, our, our style of commissioning was, 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 was more about mentality, you know, it was more about mentality, it's more about, you know, how, you, how, how, how much self-work have you done, do you get what I mean? It's more about how, how humble are you, you know, how teachable are you, how bold are you, do you know what I mean? What vision do you have? Do you get what I mean? And for me, that's way more important than who do you know, who, who do you get? Because I feel like that's the easy route, do you know what I mean? Just basically, you know, going to jump on top of other people's wrists and saying, yeah, you know, I'm going to take you on. You know, it's like, let's go down to the ground. In 2008, a good four of uh, my friends got life sentences in jail, do you know what I mean? And actually, they're still there now. And, you know, one of them, the one I'm closest to, um, he's uh, called me into because he's in a Cat D prison, which is like you know you get day visits, it's a bit you know more lax. And um, uh, a friend of him inside is a writer, do you know what I mean? And he put on a play called Spice in 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 jail, do you know what I mean? And it was sick, I can't lie. Like I went in, into the prison and I watched it, but that's the type that's the type of people I'm going to commission, do you know what I mean? Like while he's still in jail, do you know what I mean? We're actually sort of working on a on a, on a package from already, you know, to start getting a, an option with DBK Studios because. You know, that's the kind of things that we're trying to do. Like, we're not trying to, because a lot of the time, I think that IP is things that books and already things that are proven. Again, this industry is risk averse. Fine, fair enough. But I think that the biggest rewards come after the biggest risk. Do you get what I mean? So for me, I'm not interested in people that already have IP that's popping. That means that everybody else wants it. Why don't we start to go to the ground level and create that IP like gel? I mean, you can't go lower than gel. Do you know what I'm saying to you? You know, the industry standard, like I said, can be taught. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things that can be taught, but mentality cannot. Do you know what I'm saying to you sometimes? And we want to go to that internal, unchangeable factor and yeah. put the easily accessible information on top of that. <laughs>